I've told this story before. It's a story that Anthony Mello, uh, who was a Catholic priest, psychotherapist, basically a teacher and writer about spirituality. Uh, he, he t there's a story told about him <clears throat> where he's, he's in a public event and he, he says, he tells this story of a, of a farmer who's gone out for his daily walk and he finds this eagle egg in the, in the grass by the side of the road and he looks around, he can't find a nest anywhere so he, it, it's still warm so he puts it in his pocket, rushes home and puts it under one of his laying hens who's got some eggs and sure enough in time it hatches along with the other eggs and this young eagle grows up in the, in the barnyard uh, learning to scratch and dig and dig for worms and look for grain and um, flutter around the, the yard and flap its wings a little bit and fly a few metres. Basically, it lives as a chicken in the, in the barnyard. And one day, it, it's scratching around and it looks up in the sky and it sees this bird, this magnificent bird, and its, its wings are majestic and it's floating on the air currents and the sun's lighting up its... its feathers and it's gold and it's beautiful and this, this, this eagle that thinks it's a chicken is mesmerized by this magnificent sight and he, he, he turns to his neighbor and says wow look at that bird isn't it magnificent and the other chicken looks up and yeah that's a that's an eagle king of the birds magnificent but we're just chickens and they both go back to scratching in the barnyard Anthony then turns to this, this very close friend of his and, and supporter and leader of his, his ministry, his mission, his, his yeah. and he says, that's you. And this friend at first feels totally insulted and put down. And then he, he takes a deep breath and he realises Tony's not the sort of person who would put anyone down or insult anyone. If he said this, there's a deeper meaning. And as he thought about it, he realised what Tony DeMello was saying was, you, you are an eagle who can soar. But so often, you, f you act like a chicken in the barnyard. You limit yourself or you allow yourself to be limited. And Tony's inviting him into this bigger thing where he can soar like the eagle he is, become who he is calling him forth into this deeper way of being, which was Tony DeMello's way. And I thought of that story yet again when, when I read this week two stories of call, being called. The first is about Simon. Simon Peter, Simon who becomes Peter, is called by Jesus. The first time we hear about Simon in, in um, Luke's Gospel is in chapter 4 where Jesus has been in the synagogue and afterwards he goes into Simon's home and heals his mother-in-law who's sick. He enters into Simon's private space, personal space, the intimacy of, of home and family life. He enters into that space and offers grace and love. The next time we hear him, Jesus is out by the Sea of Galilee and he's um, talking and the crowds are gathering around and they're so numerous he, he, he talks he says to Peter can I get into your boat and can you just push me out from shore a bit and so they do this and Jesus speaks to the crowd from the boat when he's finished speaking he says to Peter and the other fishermen with him let's push out further in this time Jesus has entered into Peter's economic space the space of his livelihood his work his daily work. And, and for, for Peter and the other fishermen, this work is deeply uh, oppressed, if you like, in, in the Roman world because the Roman uh, Empire owns the lake and everything in it. And so the fishermen have got to get a, a, an expensive license to fish and they pay exorbitant tax on their catch. So they're controlled and owned, if you like, by the Empire. Anyway. Jesus says, let's go out, let's push out deeper, let's go out further, let's go further out. And he's pushing Peter, if you like, out, or Simon Peter, out further into the deeper water. And then he says to him, now throw your nets over. And Simon says, why, what? We've been fishing all night and we haven't caught anything, there's nothing there, it's hopeless. And Jesus says, Push, throw your nets over. 
Presumably these are tremel nets, which are a, a linen net, and they're great for fishing at night. You can throw them out and gather the fish in. Fish can't see it. But in the daytime, the fish can see the linen and they avoid it. Anyway, Simon and his partner throw the, the net over and pull it in, and it's just filled with fish. And they call to their, their other mates, James and John, come and help. So they get in their boat and come out, and the two lots of fishermen pull these nets in and fill their boats with so many fish, they're overflowing and nearly sinking the boats. And before this miraculous event in, in Peter's eyes, this, this, this experience, he says, Lord, stay away from me. You're holy and I'm not. And Jesus says, Simon, come with me into this deeper journey and I'll teach you how not just to catch fish but people. And, and that catching of people is to draw other people into this, this reign of God, this thing that Jesus has been proclaiming, this deeper, richer way. Jesus has entered into Peter's personal life, his intimate life, his family life, his economic life and pushed him deeper out into life, pushing through the ego and breaking him down in in wonder before the generosity and the grace of God. And he says, come, follow into this new and deeper, richer way. In the other story, it, it's a vision of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. And he has this vision where he's in the heavenly places and this God is on the throne and the heavenly beings are around worshipping. And there's this altar with coals. And he, he's there and he goes, oh no. I'm, I'm in the presence of holiness, and here I am, a, a, an imperfect, unholy person. I'm doomed. Because the, the, the thought was, you know, if you're in the, in the midst of holiness, it'll, it'll crush you. You know, it's beauty, it's wonder, it's perfection. And this, this heavenly being flies down with, with a coal and tongs and touches his mouth and cleanses and says, you are cleansed. And then he hears this word of the Lord say, whom will I send? Who will go and speak the word to my people? And Isaiah, filled with his spirit, filled with his life, filled with his wonder, this awe, says, me, me, send me. And the words he receives to go are, are words of woe, are words of not doom and gloom, but harsh words to speak into the lives of people, to invite them into a deeper understanding and awareness of grace and love and life and, and, and being. And this is the way of God and the way of Jesus. The, the thing that Jesus calls Peter into is not some easy, nice life where everything's tied up neat and, and, and lovely. It's a life of truth, of integrity, a life of love, a life of vulnerability and humility, a life of simplicity and being aware of of one another, of people, and inviting the, those who are different and diverse and marginalised and poor and rich and into this community of love and grace, this inclusive community. That's what we're invited into and that's what Peter's called into. And it, but it's a way of challenging the powers of the world. And, and Peter will be drawn into this way of Jesus and he won't always understand until it gets to the end where his whole world is turned upside down as Jesus dies on the cross, giving himself for this reign of God, which brings life and hope for all, all people. And then he enters into the grief of Jesus' death and into the wonder of resurrection, whatever that means. This is the journey that Peter will be on. The journey of Isaiah was a tough one, bringing God's word of, of judgment, if you like, on the way of, uh, of the injustices and the ways of, of, of life that lack love and inclusion. And then ultimately a word of hope and life and truth, opening up into a new way for the people to follow. This is what we're invited into, and I think that's what Anthony was inviting his friend into. Don't cluck around in the barnyard when you can soar like an eagle and find 
life out there, deep life, rich life, sometimes dangerous life, but life in the reign of God is filled with wonder, hope, and love. Amen. Amen.